Okay, so hello, hello everyone. Um, welcome to the Healing Springs Wellness Center page. Today we are talking to Erskine Alexander, who will be talking about empowering relationships through healthy communication. My name is Chanel Chamalau, owner of Healing Springs. And today we are so excited to do this duo. I've been envisioning having um, a conversation from the male's perspective and also the female's perspective. So thank you so much for being a part of this, Erskine. Do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, hi everyone. My name is Erskine Alexander and um, I'm a licensed mental health clinician. I'm new in Connecticut, but I've been um, working in New York and the New York City area for 22 years. I'm also an actor as well. But um, the beauty of working um, in Connecticut is I get a chance to expand. <laughs> and so um, thank you, Charnel and Healing Springs Wellness for bringing me on board back in March. Um, just a phenomenal team itself. It feels like it's been about 10 to 15 years in a lifetime. <laughs> so um, thank you. Thank you so much, Charnel. It's an honor to be here with you on this Saturday morning. Awesome. So can you tell us, like, we're so amazed to have you as a therapist working with us. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that you do? And, um, you know, I know one of your passions is working with couples. So yeah. can you share a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So, so for over 20 years uh, in New York City, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, kids, adolescents, couples, unfortunately, individuals that suffer from alcohol and substance abuse problems. Um, so I've worked with a wide range of, of, of populations. Um, the, beauty of, the beauty of working with Healing Springs and what attracted me to Healing Springs was being able to work with married couples and being able to work with young men, um, especially African-American. Uh, young men, teenage men, um, teenage young adults, all that good stuff. And so that that was what attracted me to working with uh, couples and also not just working with couples, but just being able to get research and understand how couples work, you know, how the dynamic is, especially in the African-American community. And granted, with the pandemic that took place, every couple took a bump in the road you know uh certain certain couples were met with various challenges and and in some cases some couples it, it strengthened them so the beauty of doing groups um the beauty of working with uh, individuals in practice is to get a lot of research and just to learn as much as you can about how people work together in relationships so that's what brings me here and uh it's been an honor and it's been a joy Awesome. Yeah, definitely. It's so empowering to have a space for couples to really share what's going on. And like you said, the pandemic has been so hard, right? Yes. Um, it's either you're like, I'm sick of you. We've been in the house together or yes. just life stress outside of the relationship that kind of pours in, right? And communicate how you're feeling. Um, is so important and so it's good to have the support of a therapist yes yeah because everybody needs someone to talk to because as men you know we're we're the, the quote unquote we're supposed to be the head of the households we're supposed to be the one to be the breadwinners in some cases you know and unfortunately with what happened with the pandemic you know a lot of those challenges were met you know where you know we had to worry about finances how can you be the head of the household you know how can you be that supportive person to your spouse how can you be that supportive person to your uh, children so naturally there's anxiety there's frustration and even in most cases excuse me <laughs> depression that comes about because those dynamics are challenged. I'm a man just like, you know, just like everyone else, you know, like the rest of the guys. And naturally when the pandemic hit, you know, there's always that curiosity of, oh my gosh, you know, how, you know, how we're going to make this happen and how you're going to make that happen. And the things that you would normally do when you're working prior to the pandemic, you weren't able to do that no more. So you're forced to sit at home with your spouse. You're forced to sit down and have to help your kids out with the homework. So it was a lot of things that came about that was a challenge for men as well as couples. So hopefully with this group, it'll be something that will be helpful to, um, to our men to keep them encouraged, to have them understand the importance of uh, communication and, and understanding the challenges that go through and that the fact that you know, we all go through the same exact thing. So yeah, I'm I'm extremely excited to do this. Extremely. 
That's awesome. I feel like, um, you know, one of the things, you know, even just creating the title of like empowering relationships through healthy communication, you know, can you tell me a little bit more of like what it looks like to have healthy communication in a relationship? What does oh, that even look like? Well, you know, I, I always say to all my, my clients, uh, you know, I've been married, you know, this year makes 16 years. I've been with my spouse for 20 years. And, you know, naturally, uh, communication is key. Uh, a lot of times the lines can get blurred, you know, a lot of misunderstanding uh, that can take place. But the most important thing is when you're both on the same page. That doesn't mean we have to always agree on everything. You know, you might want hamburgers, I might want steak, but if we can agree to go to the same restaurant, that's perfect. We, 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 we've made progress, and I think that's something that couples uh, should always continue to work on, um, you know, even with the children, you know. You're, you're not going to be on the same page with kids as well, because the kids nowadays, they're more technology savvy, certain things they see, certain things they experience, and as the parents, you can be like, you know, I don't agree with that, and I don't understand that, and you have to find a balance. So communication and keeping each other empowered is so important, because if you have those tools, um, it, it'll help you definitely maintain a successful relationship. Absolutely. So it sounds like um, compromise is, Absolutely. you know, understanding each each other's differences and being able to compromise is a mm -hmm. huge part of healthy communication. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that comes to mind when you think of communicating? Because I, like on the woman's perspective, like when women come to me um, for relationship um, advice uh, and they're talking about their partners, usually their um, husbands or their significant others, they're saying like, you know, this person really does not share, you yeah. know, what's yeah. going on. Um, yeah. How can I trust that, you know, I know what's going on because they're just closed off. Um, and that's from a woman's perspective. So why is it so hard for men to really open up and share, you know, we're, we're, what's going on? Right. Right. We're not as expressive as we should, you know, um, and that's just something that we've, you know, we've carried for so long, for so many years. Research says it as well. Um, you know, for years, you know, men, we're the ones that we're supposed to get up, you work, you take care of your family. You know, we don't do much talking. It's about taking care of your family, being a father to your kids. But as far as like how we feel, our primary concentration is making sure the lights is on, making sure mm -hmm. food is on the table. And so a lot of times when you have that concentration, you really don't have the time to shut, you know, have the time to really, really sit down and talk to your spouse. You come in late at night or you leave early mornings and it's like, okay, hey, because your primary focus is taking care of family. Now, that's not a bad thing by far. But the only negative is women, like you said, women like to talk. If I have a wife, you know, when, when she, she likes to talk, she likes to talk, you know. So if I have to talk with one eye open, <laughs> you know, <laughs> despite being tired, you know, you got to give them that time. And that's where you have to find the balance. You have to find a compromise because just like I said, with, with most men, you wake up in the morning, your, your goal is to always be able to take care of your family. Um, like I said, being the best father you can be, being the best husband you can be, and a lot of times when that goal, when you're so focused on that goal, you really, really don't communicate like you should. And that's just something that we have to work on. And that's just the purpose of this group is to let men know and understand the importance of being able to share these feelings. Because when you have a good, you know, when you have a, a good spouse, uh, or you're with someone, you know, you want to feel comfortable talking to that person, you know, that I think that's, that's the purpose of being in a relationship and one, have a healthy relationship is being able to communicate with each other. So, um, I wouldn't say anything that I don't practice myself. So I always say that to all my clients, everything that I say, whether it's on a podcast or whether it's on, or any kind of, uh, social media outlet, I practice that myself because it's not a cakewalk, um, it's, 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 it's not a cake walking apart all the time with your spouse, but it can definitely be a smooth ride when you both communicate and you're both on the same page because you're two different people. You know, you're two different people and you think different, you observe different, and you just have to find a way to make that mix. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, so I'm hearing, you know, like even men like that pressure of being a provider and trying yeah. to like figure things out, but they're doing it more internally, right? Yeah. Instead of collaborating together, um, like, you know, as a couple. And so that can cause that like distance, yeah. even yeah. though you guys are on the same page, shared goals, 
but there's like that disconnect in communication, mm -hmm. right? And so finding a way to like, you know, blend that, right? And yeah. be open in that yeah. sense. Oh, hello, Sandra. How are you? So Sandra has a question. She says, how do you communicate with someone who always thinks they are right when most of the time they are not? So how do you, yeah. <laughs> how does that? You said, how do you do that? Yeah. They have to, well, you know, and I'm, and this is where the men are going to probably hate me. You know, this is probably really going to get upset with me. Uh, there's always two sides to every story. Your story is not always right. You know, so as men, we have to learn to listen. That's period. And it goes on both sides. But when you're dealing with a spouse uh, that just 100% feels like their way is the right way, that is not the way you should go. And you just have to find the balance, you know, be open to listening. And that's where when you're open to listening and understanding what each other is coming from, then by far, you know, you should be able to connect the dots from there. Listen, I'm a man too. I'm not saying I'm I'm I'm, I'm always right myself. You know, I got a wife that's had to put her hand on the hip and say, no, that's just not how that's going to go. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I totally get it. But we have to be able to come to an agreement. And um, just to give a prime example, um, you know, when this whole COVID thing happened, you know, we have a daughter. So we're about to travel, right? We're in New York. Our family's in the South. Everybody's moving a little different. Everybody's moving a little different down there, right? My wife was like, well, listen, you know, I'm not going down there and going to no restaurants and all that kind of stuff because that's just what they're doing. I said, well, listen, we can't do that because it's going to look crazy. We ain't seen our family in a whole year and blah, blah, blah. So we had to find a balance. You know, her argument was, listen, well, our daughter's not 100% vaccinated yet. So I'm not trying to do all of that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it got to a point we were we were really like, I was like, well, listen, maybe we need to just pull the plug on this trip. We're not going to pull the plug on this trip, you know? So it happens. It happens. But thank goodness for the vaccination, which helped out a lot because our daughter was able to get it. So we'll be all the way 100% good going down there. But we had to find a balance. We mm -hmm. had to find a balance. And, and so it sounds like you had to bring put everything on the table, right? Instead of just like yeah. shutting down, withdrawing and saying no trip, it was like, okay, we have two different opinions. Yeah. Both are valid. So how do we come to like a common ground, right? right. Because I'm hearing what you're saying. Um, but that takes like pause, right? Reflection yeah. Yeah. and being able to just kind of say, okay, how do we meet in the middle, right? Because right. both opinions could be valid, yeah, right? They're, but they're, they're, it's, it's seeing right. each other, right? right. Seeing right. each other's views, right? right? So that makes a lot of sense. I love how you are able to be very transparent about your relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And and the authentic authenticity of that because it's yeah. so important yeah. even as counselors because people are coming to us and it's not like we're just self-disclosing but it's helping people to kind of see that a relationship takes maintenance and it yeah. takes a lot of work right to yes, two individuals yes. coming together so yeah. really ap appreciate those concrete examples hey cynthia and crystal how are you guys doing today so Crystal said, this is such a great conversation. And um, Cynthia has a question. Cynthia yeah. says, how do you get men to take the initiative without the spouse constantly axing? If we don't ax, it won't get done. We not your mama. <laughs> so how do you, so I think this is a great question, right? Because women sometimes start to play the role of mother, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sometimes men are not always motivated to do it. And instead of verbalizing, like, I don't want to do it, it becomes like they're pushing it off and then we start to nag. So yeah. how do you like, what advice can you give Cynthia? And like, how could you navigate something like that? I, it's the balance. It's the balance, Cynthia. And I've had so many couples. I had, ooh, wow, I had like two couples and that was like the primary problem. <laughs> and I think what you should do, Cynthia, basically is really, really, you know, try not, I'm pretty sure. Let's look at tone. Let's look at tone. When you're asking for something to get done, what is your tone and what does it sound like? Now, are you standing there with your hand on the hip saying, well, I need this done like right now? <laughs> you, know, if, you know, are you doing it that way? Because tone plays a major part. And the reason why I say that is that sometimes if your tone is too aggressive or if it comes across as sarcastic or a little too pushy, men, instead of verbally speaking, you know, listen, I got a problem with this issue. They will shut down. And they'll just take their dear sweet time or just flat out not do the tour, do the chore at all, you know. So it depends on everything. You know, I, I'm just like anybody else. My wife say, hey, listen, Erskine, uh, you know, take out the trash. Okay, no problem. I'll take out the trash. But if she say, well, listen, what are you going to take out the trash? Come on, what are you doing? 
that could change the dynamic of that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that can change the dynamic of how I respond to what she's asking me to do. Well, Just to give an example. Well, Sandra brought us, brings up a good point, and Cynthia does too. It's like, all right, we've asked you nicely the first one, two, okay. three times, and now it's like the five million time. Now our tone is like, off. okay. So why do men shut down? Why can't they just verbalize like I can't do it right now, or verbalize this? You know, why don't they just verbalize? Why, why shut down? Right. Um, it's really hard. You know, it's a hard thing because then we get frustrated. So right, right. And, and a lot of it has to do with our pride. You know, our ego. You know, we don't want to look bad. It's mm. almost like going in that restaurant and you know you ain't got the proper amount of money to go in there, but you're going to go in there anyway and, and you know deep down inside you shouldn't do it. And nobody wants to look bad. Men, we are the biggest protectors of our pride. Mm. Our, our pride, our pride, our pride, our pride. Like I said, this goes for me too. This goes for me too. So we don't want to look bad. So you, like you said, by the time you guys then got to the 500th time of saying, listen, I need to get this done. When we're not able to get it done, that's when it, you know, that's when the whole dynamic of the uh, the conversation changes. So I totally understand what she's saying. I totally understand. So is there anything that we can do, like, as a couple to navigate these, you know, th these requests? Like, right, so there's requests that sometimes we have to meet in the middle. But, like, how do we navigate when someone doesn't want to do something or they're not verbalizing that they don't want to do it? Like, what are some, like, good strategies to, like, navigate that? L l Let's explore why it's happening and why it's not happening. That's the most important thing, you know. So I understanding. Right. I notice you're a little slow about doing this. You know, what is your reason for not wanting to do this? You know, maybe, you know, try to get to the underlying issue of why it's not happening. Because there's a reason why it's not happening. You know, for example, if you know you're supposed to cut your grass, I'm just giving an example. The husband may not know how to work the lawnmower the right way. Hmm. You know, prime example. Oh, uh, I had a flat tire. I had a flat tire. The husband may not know how to change the tire on the flat, you know, uh, change the tire on the flat, change the tire on the car, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know so, so those are the kind, and then if you're not able to do it, then, you know, the, the little thing sits in the back of your head. Well, you're not really, really a man. And what kind of man does it, uh, da, 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 da. you know, those are the little things that, that can pop in your head. Now, granted, the spouse may not even be that type of female, but unfortunately there are females out there that will make that kind of statement. And that has been a challenge for some men. Some men have probably been in previous relationships where that was the case. So they bring the unresolved emotional baggage from the previous relationship into the new relationship. So when something similar comes up about doing certain things that reminds them about something from the past, from the previous relationship, then they're very quick to say, you know what, I'm gonna back up off of this. That makes a whole lot of sense. So because, again, when you, you talked about men being really internal, so if they have like that critical voice playing in their head or they don't know how to do stuff, it's not openly saying that. And it's it's really hard for vulnerability, right? So to authentically you know, express like, hey, I don't know how to do this or I don't want to do this right now or it's triggering from another relationship, another, like even just family, right? Like seeing... Yes your family of origin, you know, dealing with some of these communication conflicts, whatever, that kind of show up, right? So, but we as women are not seeing all the inner workings that are going Absolutely. on for men. And in, and in men, it's hard to express that. Maybe they don't know how yeah. or the pride thing. And so that becomes a barrier to communication, right? right. No, nobody wants to be embarrassed. Nobody wants yes. to be embarrassed. So if, if I feel like I'm going to be embarrassed by discussing this issue, I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm just going to shut down, you know, mm -hmm. so it, it happens a lot, you know, so that's why it's so important with communication in relationships for people to be able to sit down and talk. It's okay. You know, if, you know, if I got something on my nose that shouldn't be there, please tell me, you know what I mean? You know, but, but you have some guys that are just, you know, they, you know, they're, they're, they're very protective of, of their pride uh, uh, in cases ego and in addition to not wanting to be embarrassed or look like look like an embarrassment or let alone a failure so yeah certain things just won't get addressed certain things won't be discussed that makes a whole lot of sense so tell me how a disruption in communication can impact a connection and intimacy in a relationship how because i feel like they're intertwined right like if you're not yes. really communicating and then you know that everything can kind of be off so tell me how like 
you know, um, lack of lack of or you know disruption in communication can really impact our connection. Yeah, well, That's definitely obvious. because because you know, like you like I said, if you both have different goals and you both um, aspire to do things in a different way, then yeah, that could play a major part. And then you're not happy. You know what I mean? You, you know, you, you, you're not happy. You come home to this spouse or your significant other and you're like, you know, we're just not feeling each other. Unfortunately, when those kind of things happen and, and you're not happy, you're not attracted to the person. And that also affects the intimacy part, especially when you both feel like you're not on the same page. Um, so it's important that you talk about those things, have those kind of conversations. I always emphasize the importance of date night. The reason why I say you should always have a date night, whether it's once a week, and I know we were all struck by the COVID situation, so I totally get it, you know, but but you have to have those date nights to sit down and not just, and I'm not saying you got to go to a restaurant, but just have that time where it's just you and your spouse when you guys can sit down and, and hit the reset button to talk about challenges, talk about goals, talk about things that, that might impact the relationship when you don't have the chance to really really sit down and have those kind of discussions because you're so tied up with the kids or you're so tied up with the business of the home or you're just tied up with the business of, of just your your places of employment then you begin to feel like okay well maybe we're not able to talk maybe we're not you know maybe we're not able to speak and then what ends up happening is there's a disconnect and then that's when the intimacy that's when there's a lack of intimacy because you feel like you're not on the same page or you're just too busy and you haven't taking the time to sit down and talk about those things. Mm -hmm. I like that with um, having those date nights and being able to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. I encourage couples too to be able to have natural conversations because, you know, sometimes as couples therapists will say, have these daily check-ins or whatever. And I had a, a couple the other day was like, I can't do it because it created this feeling of like, oh my gosh, we're going to talk about bad things. And the thing is, it's finding that balance, compliments and being able to like bring up issues, but like in a tactful way um, and being able to have a safe space to do that. Because I think that for many men and women, having a safe space to be able to express how they feel without judgment or being um, like being on defense. Right. So. I don't know where you went, but you were a little dark over there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did. Unfortunately, uh, you know, of course, things. You know, we were not going to miss. We were not going to miss doing this. So, unfortunately, my power went out. But we're going to keep this going anyway. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for yeah, showing yeah, up yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Erskine, yeah, yeah, his favorite word is showtime. So it don't showtime. matter what the situation, he gonna show up. It is showtime. So That's I right. appreciate it, right? Yeah. But yeah, so definitely creating safety to have these com conversations and in a natural way. So I think date night is a great way to do that, but don't just have a laundry list of things that you want to talk about. Balance it out between the positive things that you, you know, compliments and also some feedback. It might be helpful to set that stage, I think, in addition to that. So Elise, hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Um, Elise says, communication truly is key. I feel like it feeds into the respect, trust, and love in any relationship. They are intertwined. A hundred percent agree. A hundred percent agree. Um, she asks, what will help a man feel more open to communicate and express their feelings? I, I think when you both talk about things that, that you're both interested in, that's one. Um, talk about things that you don't understand. You know, that's two. And feel comfortable and give off the presentation where you're not feeling like you're being judged. I mm -hmm. think that's the most important thing. A lot of times, you know, people don't want to feel judged. And that's always been an issue with therapy in general, whether it was with individuals or whether it's with couples or whether it's with family. No one wants to feel judged and no one wants to feel like they're being judged. To help a man communicate better, help them, let it be known to them, listen, I'm not looking at you funny. I'm not um, going to laugh at your statement. There's no such thing as a stupid answer. There's no such thing as a dumb answer. You know, we're, we're, we're sharing this so we can grow together. Once mm. that's established, that, that, that makes a man feel comfortable. And even though, you know, we're supposed to be the warriors, we're supposed to be the strong ones and such, such, such like that. But we do have our sensitive moments. You know, we have our sensitive moments. And like I said, I can't reiterate enough as a man, we, you know, we're very protective of our pride. We're very protective of, uh, not want to look like a failure, not want to feel embarrassed. So yes, we will, you know, <clears throat> bag up if we feel like it's something uncomfortable. And so that's why it's so important that you talk about certain things to make sure you're both on the same page. 
and to not feel like that what you're saying is a, a, a invalid statement or, or that it's not fun, that it's not understanding, you know, because that's what relationships is all about. That's what it's all about, you know, being able to have a good time. You should be able to have a great time with your spouse, but most importantly, being able to find that balance and being able to find that balance definitely starts with communication. Absolutely. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, and Cynthia says, what advice can you give when the couple is resentful and has a hard time communicating? How do you break down that wall? So if you've already built up that resentment, you, you're just not on the same page. Like, how do you kind of start to tear that wall down and, and get back to, you know, a level where you can communicate? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I would first say, you know, we, we have to talk first. We have to talk. I mean, we, you know, we have to talk. What would you say are some of the key issues that's making it difficult on both sides? You know, what are some of the things that's making it a challenge on both sides? You know, it, and I just want to give an example. Maybe it could be he doesn't like the way you express your feelings about certain things. You don't like the way he expresses his feelings about certain things. What is the dynamic of the problem? You know, uh, <clears throat> are you the person that wants two kids and he wants six? You know, uh, mm. are you the person that wants to stay? I'm just giving an example. Are you the person that wants to stay in New York, but this person wants to move to Atlanta? You know, um, you know, find out what those dynamics are. You know, find so out it, what those answers are. So it sounds like exploration. I think as women too, sometimes like men too, but we get on the defense, right? So you want to hear, you want to understand, but you're not really listening. You're really listening to respond. And I think that also becomes a, you know, a barrier to communication, right? So if you can kind of take the time to really be able to kind of listen, like you said, without judgment, having that space and then maybe problem solving, later but putting everything on the table and again that really takes a lot from both individuals to be yeah. able to do yeah. that they probably don't want to even hear right? right like six kids versus two i don't want six <laughs> but you have some people that say that though but you'll be amazed you have some people that will say that you know um and these are the things that may or may not be established in the beginning of the relationship these might be things that weren't even discussed in the relationship because she looked good and he looked good and all you see is just the physical and you're like i like him and i like her but the business part of the relationship as far as like your long-term goals your hobbies your interests some of those some of those things were never really talked about in the beginning um mm -hmm. so when eventually when that time comes to talk about that it's like whoa wait a minute I ain't say I wanted six kids. You said boy, I, I only want two, you know. And but but you know, and, and that's when a lot of the disconnect will probably come because you think about it, you've been dating for four years, three years, and you're having a good time, you're taking trips, you're flying all over the place, having a ball. So as you know, you start to get older and stuff like this, like, okay, well, what do we what do we, you know, what are our long term goals? Are we thinking about getting a house? No, I want to stay in the clubs all night. I want to party a little bit, you know. Um what about children? I only want three. Well, I want seven. You know, I'm just, you know, just, mm -hmm, that example. Mm -hmm. but, you know, so now kind of going back to the previous question, that's when the intimacy level kind of comes down. Cause it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, that's not what I want. I don't, I don't know if I want to do this, you know, for this amount of time or run around like this for this amount of time. So it happens. So that's why it's so important that you, you know, have the date nights, communicate, you know, talk, you know, and there's nothing wrong with talk because like I said, there's no such thing as a dumb answer or a dumb statement. It's, it's mm -hmm. no such thing. Because you're doing, you're, you say what you're saying so you can learn from each other. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I think there's a balance of chemistry versus compatibility, right? So the chemistry is that feeling like, oh my gosh, this feels so good, right? And yeah. the chemistry will still be there, but it wears off a little bit versus yes. compatibility, yes. where it's really being able to look at your values, your expectations. Um, and and I, I know a lot of women, I have to work with them on assertive communication mm -hmm. to be able to say, these are my needs, wants, non-negotiables, and then being able to hear the other person you know, be able to do that. But if you're not communicating that in the beginning, and even things will change throughout your relationship. And if you're not coming back to the table to talk about these things, everyone's assuming and then feeling disconnected. And I think that's 
the part of, you know, having empowered communication is really being able to ask questions, come to the table, and just, you know, without judgment, have that safety um, to be as a couple to talk about these things. Um, but I also, I'm also hearing that men, you know, with the pride and with, you know, um, the fear of embarrassment and all that stuff, it can be hard to have these conversations. Yeah, um, and yeah. so that's why we created this group, right, for the men of color, especially, right, because having a safe space in the world in general, right, but also within your relationships to be able to, you know, to communicate, but we need to help them to have the space and the tools, relationship skills, communication skills to be able to do that with their partner, right? And that's where we bump heads because sometimes you really just don't have the skills. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true, that's true. And that's the thing, and, I, and like I said, the men, you know, we have to feel comfortable with being able to express how we feel. That's the mistake that we've made for so many years, probably even centuries, uh, of not being able to express how we feel because it's kind of like, if we don't like something, we're not gonna touch on it, we're not gonna address it. That's one, and then two, well, I'm too busy taking care of home, I'm too busy working, I'm too busy, you know, trying to make sure that there's a roof over our head, so we don't address it. And we've gotten past the, we, we have to move past those times, you know. Um, so that's why it's important that this group, that this group will, I, I know for a fact that this group is going to be a success because men need to hear it. I'm not saying I'm just a super relationship expert, but, you know, it definitely takes work to be able to say, yes, I've been with my spouse for 20 years. So, you know, um, and being married for 16 years, being with my spouse, being with my wife for 20 years, you don't just start being a husband when you put the ring on. If you're going in that direction, you start as the boyfriend. You start as the fiance. And then, you you know, the only difference with the with being the wife and the husband is that you had this big day. You celebrated in front of, you know, thousands of people. And the work really starts. The party's over after five hours, you know. So it's so important that people understand before the glitz and the glamour and all that. Because I get it. Women, the housewives of Atlanta, housewives of Detroit. <laughs> let's let's speak on it. We're gonna speak on it. Those shows have shown people taking trips, uh, uh, having these big glamorous weddings, and I get it. I think every woman should have their Cinderella day, however way she wants it, however way she wants it. I I think that's important. However, you want to make sure that you have your Cinderella day and be able to have it last a lifetime. A lifetime. That's and the thing is, it takes work. It takes maintenance. I have couples yes. come in like, I still gotta tell him what I need. I'm like, yeah, because your needs and wants may change. Yeah. Um. And 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 you know, and people change, right? And we gotta pivot and navigate. But when you know, people are just having that tunnel vision, it just becomes hard. And I love that. Like the relation, the marriage does not start when you put the ring. It starts no. before that. And, and and you have to maintain it after that, right? So, yeah, yeah, you know, after the wedding. So that's great. Elise says, I'd rather hear the painful truth than a beautiful lie any day. Give me the truth so I can figure out how to navigate through the truth. The truth will set you free. What a beautiful thing to be transparent with your life partner. That is a blessing, right? To have the safety and the transparency and, and to be able to show up authentically. So I, I really do believe that this group is really going to help men not only learn the, the communication skills, the relationship skills, and also have a safe space to talk about the things that are happening in their lives that it might be hard to, you know, like you said, talk about um, and know that they're not alone. You know, so if you have a brother, a husband, a boyfriend, whoever, like that is a man of color, invite them to um, be a part of the um, healthy communications group with um, Erskine for men of color. And it's going to be starting on, I think it's, what is it, July 17th? Yes. I'm not, yeah. So it's going to be Tuesdays um, from 6.30. And it's, it's going to be so helpful. And women, even if you got to shell some money out your pocket to help us, it's going to benefit you guys. It's going to yeah, benefit yeah. you guys to be able to have your partner or even see your brother um, or your father being able to have that space now and have the tools to do that. So definitely share. Um, you can check out the Healing Springs Wellness um, Center page 
to um, get more information about the group or go to our website, www.healingspringsbonus.com. So Erskine, any last comments? Any last comments from the audience? Oh, first of all, thank you so much, Charmaine, for just having me on. You know, I apologize for the slight delay. I had a little power outage, but I was not missing this for nothing. And um, <laughs> I'm in my car now, and I didn't. I want my battery to die on my cell phone, so I'm 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 in here now, just like yes. But but it's so important, and I would love to answer any questions. Feel free to inbox me, call me, whatever, uh, because I want to see our brothers make it. You know, we've dealt with so much in 2020 not that we haven't dealt with issues before but we've dealt with you know just various you know issues from race different you know different things just various challenges that we've had to deal with uh in 2020 so we as men as african-american men we you know we need to have a platform we need to be able to have an outlet where we can sit down and share our feelings and our emotions because believe it or not in um in sessions i've had men talk about some of the social injustice things that they've had to deal with and how it makes them feel and how it would impact them with their families and stuff like that. Like, you know, if I come, if I go to the gym and I have on a hoodie, when I come out of the gym, do I got to worry about coming out of the gym and having a problem with a police officer and maybe being in a situation where I may not make it home to my family. These are discussions that have come about in sessions, you know, uh, from a lot of our men. So it's, and it's not just one or two, it's several men that have had it's so important that uh, all of us come to the oh, table sorry. to sit down and talk I about think these things. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so important. I definitely would love to see you on another live. Um, Erskine may have some limited availability for um, therapy clients, but he definitely is w waiting to fill this group. And I think we'll, me and Erskine will be in the works of creating a healthy relationship um, workshop for couples down the line. But We'll definitely have him on the group. I don't know if you know, Erkson is also an actor. So I just want to say that I'm honored to be in front of a celebrity. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank and you. I hope you and everyone saying like this is so needed and this was a really good conversation. So we'll definitely be back another day. Um, we'll be having a live again this Tuesday um, at six o'clock for mothers. You know, so we'll be talking about challenging societal norms. So please stay tuned um, for that live as well with um, Alex Kubani. All right. Well, Erskine, I hope you have a wonderful day. You Everyone too. Everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I truly appreciate you so much as always. Bye. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Okay.